If you follow my videos, you probably have realized that it is not really a focused channel because there are a lot of different things that interest me. So I, I tend to make videos about like, you know, different stuff, whether it's, you know, trains or uh, home automation or electronics. One thing I haven't talked about is the other thing that interests me a lot is uh, space exploration. And I was really interested when I stumbled upon this project, um, which is called the Tiny GS, GS as in ground station. So this project is, uh, well, as you can read it here as well, uh, it was uh, formalized as a tracking for a specific satellite. So a tracking station for uh, a FOSA satellite. And I mean, this is not the first project where you can, you know, track satellites or you can contribute to a tracking station. But I think probably this is the first one which is uses, you know, really simple hardware, which is easily accessible even for something like me who don't have any experience in, um, you know, ham radios or RF stuff. Because these satellites that use the TinyGS uh, network, they use the LoRa protocol and you can easily get ESP32 modules with the LoRa chip. I mean, in fact, you can, you know, from TTGO, the ones that I choose, you can buy a whole um, development board with an ESP on it and the LoRa chips, everything. So pretty much the only thing you need to add is you need to add a battery antenna to receive these uh, small satellites. And well, these satellites, as you can see, these are the really small satellites. So that the CubeSat and that sort of uh, satellites. When I stumbled upon this, I was really happy that I can actually, you know, physically contribute something. I mean, besides just receiving satellite data, I can actually help these guys who are launching these uh, small sets or cube sets to be able to receive telemetry data from their satellites. And as you can see from the list, there are quite a few satellites here, but there will be even more satellites that are going to be launched in the future. I think you can see here that, you know, some of them are future satellites or there are some inactive ones as well. And you can see from the frequency that uh, they use various fre frequencies. So there are uh, 344 or 344-ish megahertz LoRa frequencies. There is 869 or 868 megahertz, and I think there is 915 megahertz as well. So what I focused on and what uh, the tiny GS supports at the moment is the 433 megahertz satellite. So what you can do if you want to join this network is that you provide your ESP32 based LoRa board. You build your own antenna and the tiny gs network is going to support you with a firmware that you can upload to the uh, esp32 and then basically you just deploy your ground station and that's going to receive data so this is my ground station which is here and if i look at my data if i log in i have well i've created uh, one uh, test ground station but this is my you know, working ground station and it is listening to the Norby satellite. That's going to be the next satellite which passes over. And you can already see that I have received some telemetry packets. And if I go into my satellite details, so I'm here, they, these are the satellites. I mean, I won't be able to receive all of them because not all, all of them operate on a 333 megahertz. So at the moment there are basically two satellites, the Norby and the FEAS that I can receive or I tend to receive. And you can see from the data that I normally receive the Norby ones. And these satellites uh, publish multiple telemetry packets. And for some, there is a, uh, like a descriptor, which uh, tells the tiny GS network, you know, what that uh, data looks like. And these are the ones that you can see here. So it's actually getting decoded by the tiny GS network. Uh, so you can see that, you know, temperature and uh, battery level and, uh, uh, this is transmit power and you know some other details that are coming from the satellite but I think there are also packets that are uh, well either not published or you know the the content of the packet is not known so we are only seeing the binary data but as you can see since I've installed my satellite which was not actually low I think a couple of weeks I've already received quite a few different packets um, 156 so it's usually, you know, like a couple of packets during, uh, per day. And sometimes, you know, I get like, you know, three in a, in a space of uh, 15, 20 minutes. If the, you know, satellite is passing right above me and I can get, you know, several packets uh, as it passes over. 
or maybe if it's a, in a you know in a, a, a good position then I also get data from the next pass which is let's say in half an hour so one example you can see here that's the frequency uh, what I really you know focus on is uh, how far the satellite is from me when I when I receive the data and this is where you can see the telemetry data I mean it doesn't really tell me much I mean Maybe you can look at temperatures and some of the other details if you know what you're looking for. And here for this particular packet, you can see all the stations that have received this packet. And if I search for my grant station, which is this, I can see that I've received this uh, data from this satellite, which was about almost 2000 kilometers away. Well, this was a really low elevation. I think this is probably one of the lowest elevation that I've received the satellite data. You can also see the signal strength and the signal to noise ratio and some other details. Oh, okay, this actually failed. But if I would look at another one which doesn't have a CRC error, then well, that packet was received by me and it was also contributed to the tiny GS network. So maybe that was a little bit of a long introduction. So what I'm going to talk about now is that um, as you can see, I've already uh, deployed my own station and I'm going to use my second LoRa ESP32 module to install it in my uh, holiday home. So what I'm going to use this video is I'm going to show you how I'm building my second station because, well, at least I know that my first station works. So here we are going to cover the basics of, you know, what do you need to get your station built, or especially what you need to build your antenna. I think there are many antenna designs, but I was told that I should choose a quarter wave ground plane antenna and others are using different antennas and that's absolutely fine, but that's what I'm sticking with. This seems to be an easy one to build for me, even though I have no experience building an antenna at all. And then we will take the ESP32 and we are going to flash the firmware on it and that's it. And then basically you are deployed. One thing I want to say is that this tiny GS network, as I was told, it's actually based on Node-RED. So I think this probably this UI is based on Node-RED and they are also using Telegram. So pretty much the two services that I use most often. So there are three channels. First of all, if you want to, you know, work with tiny GS or if you want to create your own uh, grant station, you find this tiny GS community. So that this is where we, you know, discuss about the, you know, the tiny GS uh, network, and you find a lot of pictures here, people talking about like um, their own station, how they built antennas, and you know, obviously if the issues they have. And once you join this uh, chat, then you would automatically receive a message as well, uh, saying that you know, welcome to the tiny GS network, and if you want to configure your ground station, you open this private chat. So once you open the private chat, that's going to be your TinyGS personal bot and you will be greeted this message where you can see that you can generate your MQTT credentials. This is what we would need when we want to log in. You can show the stations that you have. So that's like these two stations. So you can do the station administration here. So if you create a station that you don't need anymore, you can delete it with a delete. And you can also get a web login, which is like, you know, this personal login where you can see the data of your station or stations. And there is actually a third channel, which is the telemetry channel. And this is where all the messages are getting published. So these are all the messages that I received by the Tiny GS network, not necessarily by your station. So for each of them, you can see that well, this message was only received by a single station. But if I scroll up, I mean, if it passes over Europe, we usually have like you know tens or even hundreds of stations receiving the same message. If I go back to the stations, or so if I go back to the map, you can see that the coverage is pretty good already. Obviously loads in Europe, uh, probably slightly less in the US, but still quite a lot. And then we have a few in South America, very few in Africa, mostly in South Africa, you know, a couple in Australia and also a few in Asia. So definitely if you want to contribute, especially if you are living in an area where there are no tiny GS station, that would probably help out the network a lot. In order to get started, we need a couple of things. So obviously the heart of the whole uh, station or ground station is going to be a TT Go LoRa board. I mean, there are many different boards supported, but I choose this one because I actually had some others uh, pr uh, previously as well. 
So in, in Europe, I think the LoRa frequency is uh, 86, what is it? 868 megahertz so i had these 866 mo 868 modules but the satellites that we are going to be tracking are on the 433 megahertz so just make sure that you buy the 433 megahertz lora board which comes with this small antenna and what i did what we need for the antenna is we need a mount where we are going to mount the you know the vertical element and the horizontal element and i choose these flanged SMA connectors because then I can solder the vertical element uh, to this pin here and then I can use these ring clips and uh, I'm going to oh, focus please so I'm going to use these ring clips to uh, fasten it to these flanges so four of them and these are going to be the the vertical elements and to connect the two together I I thought I'm going to use this rigid SMA connector so it's uh, male and female on one end which means that this flange connector is going to screw in like that and that's going to hold the antenna uh, basically away from the the, the, well, the the case or you know whatever box that I'm going to mount this in the problem is that this terminates in a female connector and I've actually borrowed the connector, the antenna connector, from these uh, 868 modules, which has this type of lead, which is this really small antenna connector, which then terminates in again in a female lead. So what I have purchased additionally is this uh, female to female coupler. So this is going to go like this, and then that's going to screw in like that. And then of course the antenna is going to be here so these are the various parts you need so i purchased these sma connectors on aliexpress i actually i found a listing of 10 and i also bought these flange parts in uh, that was also a listing of 10 the the lower board actually i purchased purchased two of them because i knew that i'm going to have two stations and then the ring connectors as i got in a one of my local electronics store so I don't have a link for that. Uh, the same as the coupler, so I just bought this locally, but I guess you can find a similar thing on AliExpress or you know, one of, in, in one of your local stores. And uh, well, so I think I would need to hunt for such a connector on AliExpress, but I'm pretty sure that these are you know, sold separately as well. Maybe there is even one which comes with a female connector, so I don't need to buy this additional coupler. But um, that's pretty much all you need. And to mount the, these um, to the flange connector, I'm just using a couple of uh, M2.5 screws and the antenna elements are going to be made of uh, three millimeter solid brass wire. And these brass wires I got in a hardware store. I think they are used for either welding or brazing. So they were relatively cheap. Yeah, they're definitely not as expensive if I've gone to a craft store to look for some you know solid brass rod and they solder fine so you know it's good enough for my purpose and there is one more thing that i always forget to mention is we also need to power this device oh by the way you are also getting some um, uh, stand of uh, sorry not stand of some pin headers for this device uh, so i'm going to use that later on but what we also need is we need to power this device and uh, for that i will purchase a five volt power supply I haven't purchased it yet so you are going to see that later in the video but if i remember correctly is these two pins here right next to the switch are the uh, five volt and the ground pins on the tt go so that's the way we are going to power this device and then the onboard regulator is going to do the 3.3 volt which is actually required for the esp but i'm just going to run it for five volts and i'm going to go for a power supply which is like i don't know like a 2 amp power supply so now that we discussed the parts, I think it's time that we, we can start building our antenna. So as I said, the current firmware supports the 433 megahertz uh, messages or satellites. So we are going to build a 433 megahertz antenna. I can't stress enough that when you are buying your LoRa module, make sure that you are buying the 433 megahertz version. So you come to this uh, quarter wave ground plane antenna calculator. You put in the frequency, which is, well, I think that's the default frequency and you click on calculate my quarter wave and then you will see that that's how your antenna is going to look like 
So the vertical element is 16.5 centimeters and the radials are 18.4 centimeters. And you can change the, you know, the unit of measure if you want this in inches. But that's basically the antenna that we are going to build. And you find quite a few different pictures how others have done it using various hardware. And as, as I said previously, a couple of weeks ago or months ago, I purchased these uh, copper rods that are for brazing. And actually, I think I yeah, mentioned it incorrectly. I'm using a two millimeter ones for my antenna. But you can see, you know, sturdier designs like this. And you don't really have to go for copper. If you have some aluminum tubing like this one, you can choose that as well. A few different type of connectors, that would be absolutely fine. I think what really matters here is the, you know, the, uh, the elements, uh, how long they should be. But again, I'm not really an expert in, well, I'm not, I don't really have any knowledge on RF at all. And since there is this calculator, I thought I was confident enough that I can, you know, start doing this. And well, I managed to create my own antenna without any issues. So first, what we need to do is we need to cut our rods. So again, we need five rods, one for the vertical element, and we need four radials, or at least I use four radials. So after cutting, I just rounded off the edges and it was very disordered. So I bought these connectors and the hole in the connectors were a little bit small. So I had to pre-drill them to make sure that the rod actually fits. And of course that made it a little bit thin, but I'm going to solder the whole thing together. So that's going to be fine, I think. Now with all the holes drilled, I could insert the antenna rod and then I can just use some, you know, flux and solder to solder the two together. So obviously I had to do for all four of the radials. And next I just solder the vertical monopole into the SMA connector. And as you can see, I just lined the two together and basically connected them with, you know, ample amount of solder. And it seems to be, you know, sturdy enough and then holds that piece of wire without any issues. And before I would mount the radials to the SMA connector, I bended them in 45 degrees. So I hold one end in plier and I just bend the wires and I had this protector and I was checking whether I'm, you know, roughly around 45 degrees. So next, it was time to assemble everything. So this is where I use the M2.5 small screws and washers and nuts. And well, basically I just, you know, screwed it together and tightened it. I even have a number five wrench. So I was able to hold onto the nut, but you can do this with pliers as well. Of course, it was a little bit difficult to do this with the camera in the way. So I just tightened everything off camera and, you know, just gently arranged the wires, making sure that, you know, sort of like, you know, 90 degrees apart. The next step, what I've done is probably optional, but I have this conformal coating and I thought maybe I'm just going to coat the base of the antenna. So if any moisture gets in, it's not going to, I don't know, maybe shorten the radials, so the, the earth and the, you know, the actual vertical element. I'm not really sure if it was ever required, but I thought it's not going to hurt and probably the conformal coating is also going to act like some sort of glue just to make sure that the nut doesn't loosen and well, the, the antenna is going to stay this way for a long time. Just make sure when you are doing it on the underside, you don't conformal coat the connection as well. And after the conformal coating dried, I was able to screw in the, the SMA extension piece, which is going to hold the antenna above the whole, you know, ground station and the ESP and well, the eventually the housing. I think I have everything that I needed to complete this build now. So obviously I have the antenna here, which I've built a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of weeks, weeks has passed since I recorded the previous segment. And I have the LoRa board here. I need to buy, sorry, I need to build a, a daughter board using some uh, uh, prototyping board just to be able to mount this because oh actually it has mounting holes here I just need to see if I have uh, M2.5 screws actually I think I do have so I might be able to mount this directly to some some sort of board and also I have this uh, uh, mean wear power supply so I bought this model I mean this is what uh, was available in my local shop and this is 5 volts 3 amps so 3 amps is more than what we need. So this should be able to run a couple of tiny uh, GS stations. If, um, 
I would expand my setup to uh, 868 8, megahertz or something else. And I decided to, uh, to put everything into these uh, plastic pipes. So I bought this really short piece. I think this is like a connector piece. So it has the two O-rings and then I have these caps. So I'm just going to have these things here. So on the top, I, I think I'm going to mount the antenna here and I'm probably also going to use the cap to, uh, to secure the LoRa board. And then to, to the lower cap, I'm just going to mount the power supply. And then finally, you know, once everything is ready, I mean, it just needs two wires for the power and I'm just going to slide everything into this pipe. I was thinking about buying something bigger, but I really don't need, so I didn't want to spend the extra <laughs> you know a few bucks for a longer pipe and probably it's going to be easier to uh, mount this like this so all is left to you know assemble everything i don't think i'm going to record the assembly i'm just going to show you the end result and with this i think i'm completed the assembly so this is the lower part of the cup so i use the cable gland and i put the power supply into well, basically just a scrap piece of plastic and I use some standoffs that you can't really see here. And I was contemplating if I should glue the standoff, but um, I mean, this plastic is not really rigid. I wouldn't be able to get it uh, to, you know, stick on the plastic. So I opted to, uh, you know, drill the cap and just use some, you know, bolts. And these are some metal standoffs that are there. And because this is going to be the underside, I think it's probably going to be safe enough, uh, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, water is not going to get into these holes. I use, also used uh, some conformal coating on the, on the screws, maybe just to seal any gaps that might be between the, you know, the screw and the, and the hole. So hopefully that's going to protect the power supply. So the tube is going to go in like this. And that's the top part. You can see the antenna connector here. I also use conformal coating. You probably can see it here. Um, mainly because I was a little bit too fast and I drilled the hole a little bit oversized to this connector. And on the underside, I just used, uh, well, basically this is the, you know, the TTGO LoRa board. And I just used a piece of perf board. And that again has some standoffs that are glued inside the cap. I didn't want to drill this because that's going to be, you know, up. So the rain is most probably going to collect here. For some reason, this is concave, which is not ideal, but this is how it came from the shop. So I don't know why they are concave. So yeah, most probably water is going to uh, collect in here. You create a small puddle here. And uh, on this specific LoRa board, uh, this pin here, so right next to the switch, that's five volt and the next one is ground. And these are the two leads that are going to connect to the power supply. So everything is wired up now. I'm just going to make a test before I seal the unit up, or I basically just connect the three halves together, or the two halves or the two cups. And as you can see, it is connecting to my Wi-Fi. So everything works and now it's connected. So um, the power supply is working and connection is working. I wired up everything correctly. So now it's uh, time to do the final assembly. Okay, this goes on tight. Actually, I think I'm going to unscrew this cable gland to let some air out. Okay, now it's fully pressed and I can seal it up. And my station is ready. And this is where the new station is being tested. So as I said, I just fixed it to this um, fence post with some cable ties and I picked this position because there is a power outlet next to this um, water faucet right there and actually this is really close to my original station which is on top of this playhouse which you can't really see but it's where is it it, it is up there 
Yeah. And so I'm assuming that if everything works fine, if my main station is receiving satellite signal, this should be receiving a satellite signal as well. So if I can see packets on both of them, at least I can confirm that the, you know, the antenna and the whole setup is working. And I think my test station, well, my second station is actually looking good. So this is how it looks like once I logged into my tiny GS account. So you can see my main station here. And then uh, it has received this many packages since the, I mean, I don't know how many weeks it's been up. And um, I've installed a second station yesterday evening. And so far it has received six packets. And if I look at the packets, um, most probably the, the packets that are received by this station also received by the other station. I mean, it is a slightly lower position, so it has more shade and um, probably blocking from the buildings and, and trees and everything. But if I look at the first one, and if I search on uh, stations, uh, then, you know, this is my main station and the signal to noise ratio is minus uh, 4.2 dB. And on the new station, it's minus 5.75 dB. So I think it's, you know, the signal to noise ratio is slightly higher on this one. So this could be because of the um, not so ideal location, but I'm thinking I don't know, maybe the LoRa module is a little bit too close to the, um, to the power supply. And that power supply is a switch mode power supply. So it can generate some noise. I'm not really sure about that. So maybe a longer pipe actually is, would be beneficial because then, you know, the, the, the LoRa board is on top, the power supply is on the bottom. So there is more, you know, space between them. Maybe that would help with the signal to noise ratio, but it is, it, it's, it's not bad at all. And, um, I mean, if you look at the packets, so Norby is um, transmitting with 200 millivolts, two, sorry, 2,000 millivolts at the moment. So FES is only transmitting with 500 megawatts, millivolts. And if I look at this station, then we can see that my main, um, sorry, uh, if we look at this satellite, my main station, the signal to noise ratio is minus 6.5. This is minus 8.75. So again, uh, slightly bit worse. Um, Mm. So, I mean, you know, that's a guessing game, especially for me who don't know too much about radio and communication. And also, if I look at my other station, so you can see the last three messages were Norby messages, but this has received a lot more FES message. Actually, well, a lot, lot more. And then, you know, some of these messages, um, I'm, I'm not sure which one was received by, um, by my other satellite as well, but this wasn't. And if I look at this one, yeah, the signal to noise ratio is very, very high here, minus 14.5. So maybe for my test station, it was so bad that it actually um, did not receive the message. So that's, that was the only one. So this is the type of confirmation that I wanted to get. It looks okay for me. Uh, maybe actually I would go back to the hardware store and buy a longer pipe and just, as I said, space out the receiver and the power supply. Maybe that is going to help a bit. But, you know, so far it's receiving messages, uh, definitely receiving the messages from the uh, 2 watt uh, transmissions and also the half watt transmission. So hopefully that's going to be good enough. So I think, um, well, this station is going to stay uh, at this test location. And uh, maybe in a couple of weeks when I go to my summer house, I'm going to reinstall it. So at least I would have two stations about like, I think about 200 kilometers apart. So... I mean, in some constellations, maybe one of my stations would be the only one in range of a satellite so I can get more coverage and, you know, better contribute to the tiny GS network. But I think that will be all for today. Everything I talked about, like links and, you know, the um, antenna sizer and everything, I'm just going to put links down into the description below. So if you're interested, you can follow that and then build the same uh, station that I've built. And... Uh, you can also receive satellite messages. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.